Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a restful night, unlike me. Happy Friday preparation day. When God delays, turn out great. Help, God, help me, please. God, I desperately need your help right now. When you cry to God for help and all you get is silence, no response. God, are you there? Nothing. Whether you're a Christian or someone trying the God thing out, as nothing else seems to work and you decide, well, might as well I do something else. What do I have to lose? Whatever your situation, you have encountered God's delays. David encountered them after waiting for years after being crowned king as a child. All he recognized at the end was these were character forming years. But this is how he expressed himself when he was going through the moment in Psalm 69 verse 3. I was weary with my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. And in Psalm 62 verse 1, again he wrote, my soul waits in silence for God, only for him in my salvation. Waiting is exceptionally difficult and it certainly does not feel great. But you are not alone. Joseph had to wait. Is technical a coat and favorite child to pit Potiphar's house to jail to second in command in Egypt, all because he never lost sight of his promise and he waited. Even after death, although unknown to him, his remains waited, waited to be returned to his place of birth to be buried. Joseph waited, Hannah waited, Paul waited, and you too have to wait. Paul and his friends journeyed through the region of Pergia and Galatia, having been prevented by the Holy Spirit from expounding the word in the province of Asia. On arriving, he was told, at, arriving at the border of Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit forbade him. Consequently, they journeyed by Mysia and went down to Troas. In the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and imploring him, bidding him to come. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Following the vision, Paul prepared for Macedonia, assuming that God had called them to share the gospel to them. Acts 16, verse 6 to 10, read it in your spare time. Like us, sometimes we, we thought the things and the doors that are open are God's way of imploring us to go. Asia are described in Acts in, as modern Turkey or as in Asia Minor. Turkey is divided into Europe and Asia Minor. The cities of Pergia, Galatia, and Mysia Bithynia and Troas are all in Asia Minor. In the start of Acts chapter 16, Paul was current in Asia with a decree from Jerusalem. He met Timothy in Lystra and persisted in verse four to share the gospel in Southern Turkey. Nevertheless, once Paul got to Pergia, the Holy Spirit prevented him from speaking. So Paul and his colleagues continued from place to place until it was unveiled to him in a vision in Troas that he was urgently wanted in Macedonia, which is Northern Greece. This could possibly be one reason God prohibited Paul from preaching in Asia Minor. They would not have been in the locale they needed to be, that had, had they remained in Galatia any much time longer. Paul had to trust God's timing. Paul had to trust what he knew about him. Like David and Joseph and the children of Israel, God's promises were sure, and his delay is always great as long as we stick to his plan and purpose. He comes just on time when it matters most. Again, Paul must have wrestled as he remained in custody in Caesarea. Scripture tells us that after two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Porcius Festus, and wishing to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul imprisoned. Two long years of his life. No mention of God in Scripture. It sounds so fickle to gain political leverage. An egotistical politician leave God's main man in the Gentile prison, and God quiet and seemed to be nowhere. The word going out of Gentiles will get there some other way. We would just have to wait. Yet Paul waited and prayed and waited and prayed and waited and waited. I wonder what he was thinking. Why the delay is getting me out of here? There are several lessons we can glean in our waiting moments when God's delay seems not so great. God uses his delays to instruct us to trust him more fully and to submit more completely to his sovereignty over our lives. One, God uses his delay to teach us to trust him more wholeheartedly. Paul was affluent, dual citizen. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel, but he did not graduate from God's delay. Neither did he have to emancipate himself from having to use faith. In spite of his postdoctoral degree, there were lessons God needed him to learn, and he had a growth moment or so. So when God delays, we must trust him by submitting our agendas to him. 
Paul's agenda in Romans 15, verse 25 to 29, was he, he went to Jerusalem just to give them the gifts he collected from the Gentile churches. And then he was on his way to Rome. But God had other plans. This was not a self-centered agenda. And like most of us, after all, he had suffered for the cause of Christ. You couldn't blame him if he was going to take a retirement in a nice seaside resort, right? And Paul was seeking to serve the Lord, but spreading the gospel where Christ had not yet been named in Romans 15, 20. That was a godly agenda, but it was not God's agenda, at least not in the way that Paul envisioned it. He would eventually get to Rome, but not as quickly as he hoped. Maybe he went to Spain or somewhere else. But while Paul sat in prison in Caesarea, he had to submit his agenda to God and trust God to work it all out in his time. There is nothing wrong with God's desires and hopes for the future, as long as it's all in God's plans and on his agenda. We all should dream about what God may do through us in the future. We should plan and we must be sure and be able that it must be godly spiritual goals for our lives. But after all the planning and goal setting, we have to bow and surrender them to God. Lord, not my will, but yours. When God delays, we need to trust him to achieve his will through us by his power. Paul did not try to get out of prison. He did not have a get out of jail card, but he took his prison confinement in stride. And while he was there, it sure deepened his trust in God. He could have said, God, I was doing your work. I'm done. I need to get out of here. He recognized also that God has a hand. And for two years, I am sure he made the best of his situation. And it turned out that place upside down for God to work it out for him. He allowed God to accomplish his sovereign will and purpose for his life if it meant staying two years in jail. Acts 23 verse 11, the Lord appeared to Paul and informed him that he, was, he needed him to witness his cause in Jerusalem. So he went and witnessed, so he would witness at Rome also, sorry. The text did not say much, but God seems to check out after then. And as far as any visible and audible message to Paul, I didn't see any. He did not give Paul a heads up to the journey ahead. Paul, there's a plot on your life. There'll be more than 40 ferocious Jews, so be prepared. He did not inform him about the false allegation that were brought against him in the Phoenix courtroom. He did not even mention that Paul would be imprisoned for two years in Caesarea and then transferred to Rome as a prisoner. He did not share all the details about being shipwrecked in the Mediterranean Sea and spending a winter in Malta. In all these trials and inter interruptions, those similar delays, Paul had to learn to trust God's promises to him and wait on him to work through his power in his time and purpose. Did Felix politically driven injustice of leaving Paul in prison toward God's plan? Definitely not. No self-centered immoral politicians or no situation in your life, no matter how powerful, can even put a bump or a hump in the road of God's sovereign plan for his people. But God desires us to trust him nevertheless when it appears as if some evil person or peril is blocking our ability to go ahead with our plans for serving the Lord. We normally don't understand the reason for God's delay, but we must trust him anyway and know that our God will turn it around and know that he's aware and knows that what he's doing and that he is not frustrated, not an inch or an ounce by the impulses and quirks of anyone around. When God delays, we need to trust in him and not in our situations or circumstances. Felix saw Paul several times. They had many conversations and each time Felix sent him back just to jail. I'm sure Paul thought that maybe once Felix would be converted but Felix never became converted and he never released Paul. If we trust in our circumstances, we'll have a roller coaster type of Christianity. When things are looking up, we will be up. When things are low and down, we will be down. But it was a few years after this that Paul, still a prisoner, wrote these great words to the Philippians Rejoice in the Lord. In spite of all of his years of trials, Paul was full of joy, not in his circumstances, but in the Lord. And let me just summarize the story of Adon and Aram Judson and his new bride, Nancy. They decided they'd leave New England and went on their way on the gospel trail to Burma. After a difficult four months voyage and they arrived in India, they became discouraged by the reports of Burma and to learn that they could not stay in India. They decided to take a, a year moving from India to Mauritius and back to avoid deportation. Finally, against all advice, they made a, their way and aboard a ship to Burma. En route, Nancy gave birth to a stillborn child and she almost lost her life also and died. They finally arrived in Rangoon and began the arduous task of learning Burmese. They found that the Burmese people were high on Buddhists and to totally, they were totally disinterested in and opposed to Christianity. There was only one English speaking couple in Rangoon left. 
Leaving the just alone to struggle with the language and the mission, they abandoned their trip. The birth of a son brightened their lives, but when he was eight months old, he became ill and sadly he died, no medical doctors. The Judson buried him in their backyard and with tears they plodded on. After six years, they finally baptized their first convert. A handful more trickled in over the years, but mostly they faced fierce opposition from the Buddhist monks and the government. In 1824, the British went to war against Burma and Judson was arrested, tortured and imprisoned on false charges as a spy. The conditions and tortures in the prisons were terrible. And as he suffered a fever in the dark prison cell, Judson White delivered a letter from a through the hands of a friend and asked him, how is the outlook? He replied, the outlook is as bright as the promises of God. Wow. If we could just in our lives say the same thing, the outlook is as bright as the promises of God. There was a man who had learned to, there was a man who had learned to trust in God, not in his circumstances or what is present. Johnson later was released from prison only to face the death of his wife and his two-year-old daughter. He fought intense depression and struggled against numerous setbacks, but he plodded on in faith until he died at age 62. Today, over 600,000 Burmese Christians trace their route back to Adinaram Judson, a man who hoped in God and lived among adverse situations. When God delays, the ultimate end will always be great if we trust him, even if we never live to see it. All we have to do is to submit our agendas to him, to accomplish his will through us and by his power. We must trust in God, not in our circumstances. When God delays, we must trust by doing right, even if we do not reach our goals. God uses his delay to teach us to submit more thoroughly to his lordship and sovereignty over our lives. We must submit to God's sovereignty by acknowledging that he is God and we are not. We must submit to God's lordship by not grumbling while we wait. Paul says, do not grumble. In all these things, do not grumble or dispute that you may prove yourself to be blameless and innocent children of God, above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as light in the world. If you've ever been in the military, you're acquainted with the phrase, hurry up and wait. You would get out of bed at 5 a.m. and then you had to stand in formation for 45 minutes to wait for breakfast. Then you march to class 20 minutes before class starts just to stand in line and wait for the other class to be dismissed. Hurry up and wait. So we are in a hurry, aren't we? but we find that we have to wait. Paul says, I rather rejoice in the Lord or lives will shine as light in the dark world. So even while you're in Ori, just remember that you might have to wait. We submit to God's Lordship and sovereignty by taking advantage of present opportunities while we wait. Paul was in prison and he was dying, dying to have books. Paul uses imprisonment while he was in the mid 50. And I'm sure he was trying to share the word with the prisoners around him. You know, some people like John Calvin died at 54, Martin Luther at 62, Jonathan Edwards at 55, and Charles Spurgeon at 57. But in his mid-50s, Paul wasn't going downhill. Paul was facing impending execution, and yet he wanted books. He wanted knowledge about God. As Christians, we may not comprehend why God makes us wait at times when it seems that we need immediate answers. But whatever your situation and circumstance, dig into the word of God. But we do know that the Lord Jesus Christ and he can be trusted. When God's delay isn't great, it will turn out very great if we only know how to trust him. David wrote, I would have despaired unless I have believed and I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, my friends. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, even when it doesn't feel great. Wait on the Lord and he will turn it out great. Heavenly Father, this morning we want to invite you in and simple to teach us how to wait on you. How to wait when the waters are murky and when everything is dark and bleaky. How to wait on you until you turn our situation out great. Even if we don't see it on this side of the land of the living. Help us to live with hope like our forefathers, knowing God that you will turn it out great. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed preparation day. Bless, bless. Happy Sabbath when it arrives. Happy Sabbath, everyone.